Thanks uh, very much for staying until the very end of the day on a Friday, um, especially for a talk that's about failure. Um, uh, and that's, that's what I'll be uh, talking about today. And uh, to give you a little bit of context, uh, the reason I'm going to be talking about failure today is because of the company I work for called PagerDuty. And uh, although I have a front-end experience and background, uh, PagerDuty makes a, a product for on-call engineers. And that product, what it does, if you're not familiar with it, is it's the thing that wakes you up in the middle of the night when bad stuff happens, among other times. Um, so obviously on the engineering team at PagerDuty, uh, there's, people are always thinking about failure and how to manage it, and particularly how complex systems fail. Uh, what really inspired me to do this talk, though, was that those kind of best practices in operations teams and uh, what they're thinking about is just starting to trickle into the front world. So I'm going to go over a couple of quick things. Uh, the first thing is, and we already know this, that it's inevitable that your JavaScript app will break. Even if you don't break it, the browser will eventually break it for you. Um, I think there are some great ideas from operations teams that we can borrow as a community to make our apps more resilient. I want to throw in just a little bit about the theory of complex systems failure. And also, for a more practical note, talk about some open source tools and services that I think ultimately help you make more resilient apps. And then finally, uh, in closing, talk a little bit about why that's important at all. Um, so here's your standard Google Trends graph. I'll tell you that one of these is JavaScript. The other one's a mystery line. If we had more time, I'd, uh, I'd take guesses. But uh, just to go ahead and do the reveal, one is failure and one is JavaScript. Good news is JavaScript is twice as popular as failure. Um, and that, uh, that speaks to, uh, to one important thing that most of the time your apps aren't failing. Uh, the thing you use, the people, thing people are interacting with, uh, most of the time, or hopefully, it's not in a failure state. But uh, that can't, you really can't get around uh, a larger fact, and this is the first part of three parts of um, uh, theory behind complex systems failure uh, from this uh, fairly well-known paper by Dr. Richard Cook who specializes in medical system failure, um, which is also another complex system, but it recently took off in 2012 when he gave a talk at Velocity, and it kind of has gained a, somewhat of a cult status. And I really encourage you to read the paper. It's only three pages long, and it's mostly bullet points. Um, but we know these complex systems are very hazardous, and that bad things will happen. So what does that really mean in the front of the world? I think traditionally it means a JavaScript exception. Uh, everyone, I'm sure, has seen this dialogue before, the dreaded Internet Explorer 6 uh, exception dialogue. And it may you never have to see it again. But ultimately what's happened is in the past few years there are all of these services. Uh, they, you put a little uh, script uh, snippet on your page. Um, Paul Irish, not surprisingly, has the most comprehensive list of all of these services. Um, but the end result is you get something like this. Uh, you get a list of JavaScript errors. Uh, they typically have some sort of spark line, and you can kind of track it over time. The problem is that window on error is very noisy. If someone has a misbehaving plugin or something, you know, you'll get all these weird errors, including network errors, and things that really you didn't cause. It's something else going on. Still useful, but um, ultimately, it's going to be, it's, this list will never end, and you'll keep getting new ones because of the second part of the theory that any change will introduce new forms of failure. That unless we were able to completely freeze the entire development environment and everything that interacts with our code, there'll always be new cases of failure that are going to pop up. Um, so I think we can do a lot better than that, uh, than just window on error tracking. And fortunately, there's this really interesting tool called Phantomist. Has anyone heard of that before? Cool. Cool. Um, so what it is, is it's the Phantom.js. Uh, it's Phantom.js, which is a headless WebKit browser. And ultimately, the really interesting thing is it's a CLI that gathers metrics on a page you pointed at. Really, really interesting project. If anyone on the core team is here that's done this, I really have to say really, really great job on doing it. But how it works is pretty easy. Uh, you have, it's a command line uh, tool, so you can give it a cookie if it's behind a session or a paywall or something. And then you choose an output. Uh, in this case, I'm choosing StatsD, which is a, um, a really simple metrics aggregation protocol developed at Etsy and Flickr, I think. But all that does is uh, this fake URL here, it's going to hit it with its, uh, with its headless browser and then tell me a bunch of really interesting and detailed metrics about how that page is behaving at that point in time without me needing to like, insert any scripts or modify the page itself, since it's, a, it's, a, it's an actual browser that's hitting it. So. Uh, what that ends up doing is uh, you have a really easy workflow, and in an afternoon or an hour or two, you can set up a really cheap and easy uh, kind of metrics dashboard for your sites. 
Um, there are obviously commercial tools that do this as well for you. Uh, New Relic, I think, is one of the best known ones. Uh, but it's also very easy just to do this on your own for free. Uh, you've seen a cloud server or even your laptop, a cron job that kind of runs Phantomus uh, at some interval. Um, and I'm using Datadog as kind of my dashboard tool or, or my metrics aggregator to kind of see these trends over time. <laughs> Uh, and then the third part is you can configure alerting. So when something bad happens, when your errors start to jump after a deploy or in the middle of the night, something terrible happens, you can actually get an alert that you know, suddenly your front end metrics have gone south. And then that leads me to the last point, then you can get woken up like at 3 a.m. just like your operations team. Uh, so um, this is uh, my little Datadog dashboard. Uh, this, is, this took about 10 minutes to create. I have all these Phantomous, uh, Phantomous metrics that are being sent over StatsD to Datadog, which is, this is the uh, Datadog interface, and you can drag and drop these, uh, these different metrics, which is pretty cool. Um, I just chose a couple. Uh, one is you know, the number of JavaScript errors on the page, pretty useful, the number of AJAX requests, the time to first byte of the slowest response, the uh, size of the HTML body, um, the count of assets not gzipped, or the largest response in total number of bytes. And there are dozens and dozens more of these, so you can completely customize what uh, metrics on your dashboard are interesting. Um, one, one thing that I think GitHub did really well, and they wrote a blog post, it's linked there, is they actually integrated a tool like this into their actual uh, developer site. So there's a toolbar that pops up that gives you similar metrics if you were browsing GitHub internally, and they talk about that more at that link. Um, last part. Uh, for this kind of dashboard, which uh, kind of ties into PagerDuty. Sorry for the, the plug here. Uh, but you can uh, define an alert. Um, so in this case, I have all these metrics. I have this pretty dashboard. But then, using this alerting component, I can actually say if the, fronting, the, the count of JavaScript errors exceeds some threshold over some amount of time, then it can actually fire off something and actually tell me uh, wherever I might be. And it integrates with a number of learning tools, including, of course, the company I work for. Um, and uh, you can really choose any metric that you care about to be alerted on. Um, and, it, and Datadog makes it very easy. I should note, though, that uh, although Datadog is a commercial product and there is a free tier, um, you could potentially build this yourself with, um, with you know, open source tools uh, like Graphite. Uh, but I chose Datadog because I'm lazy. Didn't want to really have to set up my own Graphite instance. Um, so last part of the theory is that failure-free operations require experience with failure. That you're never going to be, I mean, as, as you find new cases of fail, like failure, you get better at managing it and you create more resilient apps. Um, that's kind of definitely part, a big part of PagerDuty culture. We have this thing called Failure Friday, where every Friday we inject failure into our systems. Uh, the fun thing is, you can actually do that with front-end code, too. Uh, people have taken a Chaos Monkey and started to port it to the front-end. Chaos Monkey is the well-known uh, Netflix project, where they actually kind of injected chaos into their back-end, and you know, things, uh, things started to break, and they're like, oh, we need to fix this, and we can understand our systems better. Um, this, uh, this first project is a pretty straightforward uh, kind of jQuery extension. So you load it on your page. You can say, OK, so with this, set, with this JSON configuration object, I'm going to make 50% of all my AJAX GET requests just completely fail. Um, but uh, the really interesting thing that comes out of that is it prepares you for a bunch of failure types that typically you wouldn't normally do during your normal development workflow. Uh, CDN failures, obviously a big one. Uh, your API backend going down on a single web page app, you know, connection failure, um, particularly with mobile web apps. Someone goes into a tunnel, they lose their connection. Kind of, how does your app react to that? Um, or even things like bad SSL certificates, and there are probably several more as well. Um, so uh, there are a couple other strategies that are even easier. If Chaos Monkey browser doesn't, you know, that's too much. Uh, the really interesting thing is in Chrome Canary DevTools. Uh, there's a new tab in the emulation part where you can actually just take the network offline at any point. Um, so that's just super, super interesting, particularly for anything mobile related, because the network connection's far more fickle. And all you have to do is toggle the drop down and you lose your internet connection. And the cool thing is you can also actually choose slower connection speeds in your Wi Fi connection. So it has that kind of network uh, latency thing. Uh, if you're a mobile developer, Apple has the thing called network link conditioner. It's just like that, but it's built into Chrome, so it makes it even easier. Um, last thing, I'm kind of torn whether this is actually really important anymore. 
Um, but it's always kind of funny to see what happens when you turn off JavaScript. Uh, there are plugins like Quick JavaScript uh, Switcher that make this even easier than before. Surprisingly, for some like top five sites in the United States, things look pretty bad. Um, even on Amazon, like this was two days ago, like there's all this weird CSS that just appears at the top of the site, which I think is a little bit sloppy for a, for a site that gets as much traffic as Amazon does. Um, I think that kind of brings us back to the different things we can learn uh, in dealing with failure in our apps. Um, it's really critical even if you're a front-end developer, to measure errors and key, perform key performance metrics over time. So you get, a really good, you get a, an idea of how your app is changing and whether performance is going up or down, and ultimately trying to identify deploys and code changes that affect uh, these metrics. And um, for the performance stuff, particularly the stuff that Phantomus uh, aggregates, um, that's critical because uh, a JavaScript app that has really terrible performance is the same as a JavaScript app that doesn't work at all, uh, especially nowadays. Um, and even if you have all of these metrics coming in and you actually know like, oh, whoops, you know, my, the size of my uh, request just doubled, um, you really have to annoy yourself to fix those things because it's not necessarily, it doesn't seem broken after they happen, but uh, they'll just grow worse over time if you just don't nag yourself to address it uh, immediately. And that's where some sort of alerting solution comes in. Uh, including the one with the logo on this, uh, this, this slide. Uh, and then, uh, of course, that forces you to find these remediation steps to make sure these error states don't happen again. Um, and then ideally, you can get experience with failure without waiting around for failure to happen in the first place. It's much easier and better to know what happens when your app goes offline before a customer or a client notices or before your CDN goes down. And so that's part of injecting failure in your system is trying to identify uh, you know, those cases before you really have to and at a convenient time for you. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, that's my talk on failure.